Blessings of joy and peace to you. I say that because as I read the word of God and understand the writings of Paul, blessings are one of the greatest gifts we can give to one another, especially at a time like this. Paul was well accustomed to Jewish blessings that he had throughout his lifetime. He brings blessings to his readers at the beginning and at the end of his writings with them. But we as Christians, we are a blessed people. We have received the blessings of God through the mercy shown to us through our faith in what Jesus did for us. In the book of Romans, Paul has been working hard to bring harmony and sanity to a group that was divided and hurting. They were coming to, ter coming to terms with the work, uh, work of God with the Jews and the work of God with the Gentiles. Paul needed to show them that they were part of the same story of redemption through faith that began with Abraham and was accomplished at the resurrection of Jesus. After a long discussion, Paul is ending the letter and he gives them a blessing. In Romans 15, 13, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. The God of hope. When Paul talks of the God of hope, he's calling the Romans and all of us to remember that God is the one who knows the future. He's the one that created the world, and in his omnipotence, he knows the way that all creation will go. In Romans, Paul showed them that God is the one who has worked out the salvation of all men, Jews and Gentiles. Salvation from their sins, salvation from the physical, worldly destruction that man has created for himself. Some would argue that, some would argue that God is, is vengeful. And the idea of, of hell goes against the concept of a loving God, but they fail to see God as the being that is so different from us that we can only grasp what, what he has revealed to us. He created us to be like him in the image of God, but we have each chosen to live apart from that image. We have each chosen by our own free will uh, to not be the fullness of what God created us to be. Hell is a place of our own choosing. We choose to separate ourselves from the God that created us to be like him. But God is a God of hope. He gives us a way to be justified from our sin, from our brokenness that we brought upon ourselves and the brokenness brought upon us by the sins of others. One of the things that hope does is that it transports us out of our physical surroundings and into the spiritual realities of our lives. We're, we're all trapped in a way right now. We're, we're all living in some kind of isolation from our normal routines and circumstances. Even those living alone um, as shut-ins or in assisted living, they feel this distance and, and isolation. My mother is one who now has to sit by herself at meals and can no longer read with her friends. But the God of hope reminds us that we are not alone. As Hebrews 12 reminds us, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We do not see them with our physical eyes, but we see them through the eyes of faith given to us by our fellowship with one another by the God of hope. Paul prays that the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Our hope comes from God who brought us into relationship with him when we had rejected his original design for our lives. This belief should be a source of great joy. We can have joy that we have been restored into a great relationship with our creator and father. We can have joy that we get another chance to live as God created us to be. We can have joy that we are being made into what God has wanted each day as we freely choose what God has given to us. I recently read a book that greatly troubled me because of the author's warped view of my God. The God he saw through bad teaching and misapplied scripture was a God that provided no hope. He saw a God 
that only brought punishment, destruction, and pain, and enslavement. He judged God by his own judgments of what he thought should be right and wrong, without realizing that what God calls us to is outside of ourselves. He calls us to a life of abundance, not just, not just in the future, but now. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to kill and destroy. I, Jesus, came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The devotionals from last week reminded us uh, to rejoice, not just because of what we will be, but because of what is now. I'm filled with joy because I'm not who I would have been had God not rescued me and changed me from who I was. I'm filled with joy because I see God changing others around me. I rejoice when I see my children embrace the love God has for them. I rejoice when I see other young people light up when God's word becomes more than, than just a story. I'm filled with joy because of the God of hope. The God of hope not only gives us all joy, but also peace. Matt reminded us of, of peace yesterday. We have peace through our faith in God. We have peace because we are no longer living outside of what God created us to be, but we are now living and striving for the image of God that he has put into each and every one of us. Addictions are a terrible thing. Addictions by their nature can never bring peace. When someone is in an addiction, no matter what it is, their body can never find peace. It's always striving for something more. In her book, Never Enough, Judith Grizzle explains addiction as both a recovering addict and as a neuroscientist. And she explains that the body naturally adjusts to the extremes presented to it by whatever the, the addiction brings. Because of those adjustments, whatever joy or pleasure we think comes from that addiction, our body will compensate for and require more and more each time. An addict will never achieve the same sensation they have after that first time they try something. She explains that her breaking point came when she finally realized that there would never be enough cocaine to satisfy her addiction. Addicts will never find peace as long as they live in that addiction. But we, when we allow ourselves to be transformed into the image of God by obediently submitting to who and what we were created to be, we will find peace. We know that when we treat our bodies as they're intended to be with the nutrition, the exercise, the rest, our bodies function properly. Same is true of our spiritual bodies. We exercise our faith by showing kindness, letting the fruit of the Spirit be shown in our lives. We grow by abstaining from the things that will harm us and take us further from the image of God. We feed ourselves on the nourishment of God's Word, and we rest and meditate on the blessings God has given us. We then live out Romans 12, 1 and 2 in our lives. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by, the test, by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is peace. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. The God of hope fills us with joy and peace in believing so that we then abound in hope. I came across the expanded Bible and, and it says, then your hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I love that image of, of hope overflowing because that means we share it with others. This mirrors what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine 
before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. God wants us to be filled with all joy and peace from our being like him, the image of God, so that others can experience hope. Man cannot create hope for man. We live in a world broken by our own sin and selfish desires. As much as mankind thinks he has grown and conquered the world around him, he cannot be more than just a man. One of the realizations I hope this world sees from our present crisis is how little we really understand about the things we think we control. Unless man looks outside of mankind and sees the image of God, unless he sees a hope that is not something he can produce within himself, he will never find lasting hope. Our world is in need of hope because our world needs a savior. They need to see and hear that God cares for them and this world. They need to see that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are the fruit of the Holy Spirit living in our lives. They need to know that they too can have all joy and peace in believing in the God of hope that created them in his image and calls them into a relationship with hope, with him. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope.